essentially California, the state of California asked us to do an election security project. Uh, we had four tasks in the project. Uh, my team led a task to sort of push forward in scalable analytic methods to try and detect in the wild and also in time any foreign election interference efforts happening over social media. So we collected a, a large set of social media data, in this case, Twitter data, it's networked, which added a lot to our study. And um, we got basically 2.2 million tweets from 630,000 uh, unique Twitter accounts using a set of election terms to get talk about the US election from Americans. And then we uh, used a kind of network analysis to break that large data set down into more meaningful subsets of people that have common shared interests and ways of speaking and advocacy goals. We then used human machine uh, text mining, so text analytics at scale to understand uh, this sort of rhetorical battlefield and understand what's happening there. We then used um, a supervised machine learning method, so, so classifiers. We used um, existing examples of trolls from the 2016 uh, election uh, that were known Russian trolls from St. Petersburg. Use these to train um, some machine learning models to see if we can find them in this uh, data. We also did some statistical analysis to try and find like outlier or like statistically anomalous things that could be suspicious. And then we tried to do some human analysis to understand, well, okay, we found maybe some, some suspicious weird accounts. What are they doing? What are the tactics? So um, first off, just uh, not too much method detail, but this is hopefully enough to be useful. I have a giant pile of 2.2 million tweets about something. It's a lot of data. It's not subsetted into more useful packages. It's hard to interrogate. It's a giant, giant bucket. So what I do is I use, uh, in this case, we use alluvian modularity, which is a kind of like a very efficient way to say who talks to who, because the people you talk to the most, that's your network. I talk to my mom a lot more than like, I don't know, some like random person in Iowa or whatever, right? So the density of network connections helps um, an, an algorithm infer membership, a bunch of people that are connected socially and interact with each other. So the algorithm takes this giant 2.2 million tweet, tweet set and breaks into smaller uh, sets, which have you know tens and hundreds of thousands of, of tweets in them that are all defined by their own social interactions. We then use um, human in, uh, analysis along with a variety of um, statistical and machine learning methods to interrogate all those communities and then understand them. So if you look on the left-hand side, they're, they're numbered. You know, the machine is dumb. It's like, I found some collections of people. I don't know who they are. But then as we look through these now sort of buckets, I can see with text mining, oh, this bucket is about, uh, you know, people that support Bernie Sanders. And this bucket is people who are salivating over the prospect of President Trump being um, uh, found guilty of collusion. And here are people who are really anti-Democrats uh, and pro-Trump and pro-QAnon. And here are people that are pro-Yang and pro-war and so on and so forth. So you end up with a kind of a, a rhetorical uh, a, a battlefield or some, sort of a map of the rhetorical struggle online over this. By the way, this, is, this is from January to uh, end of May. So not the whole year as we, we wanted to do it, get data, analyze it and see if it was happening and then act on it. Um, so we, we did two things. So, so, so one, not only can we understand the context, these um, more meaningful buckets can reduce um, noise and increase signal. If something's weird or if there's a cluster of something, it's now visible because it's happening in a certain place. So we did sort of two main things. One was we used this machine learning algorithm to try and find troll accounts and we did. We found in several of these um, uh, different um, uh, uh, communities, a high concentration of really suspicious accounts that look an awful lot like they talk just like Russian trolls. What we also found is that they were super connector accounts. They're probably bots, but they're accounts that have managed to somehow leverage Twitter's rules to wind up very densely connected, either right at or like one off uh, Twitter's rules for non-checked, like non-blue check marked ones. So they're sort of ideal for spreading information. And the, the troll ones, hyper-partisan, uh, almost all retweets, um, political only, like no, no, never a picture of like your kids or your cat. It's all just like, you know, anti-Trump or anti, you know, Biden all the time. Um, and really virulent stuff. So they're really hyper-partisan. Uh, and then the super connectors, uh, a very rare kind of account that clustered in only a few of these. Um, they're rare on Twitter, but they were clustered in a few of these. Again, highly suspicious and likely a botnet 
Um, and uh, they were doing things like boosting certain hashtags. So they seem to be coordinating their activity. So some of the tactics, and by the way, uh, so the, the table on the left there is the different communities with human labels, like we labeled, the team labeled them based on our analysis and uh, the, number, the number of unique accounts in the uh, community. And then the percentage of accounts that were super connectors or trolls. And these numbers are off the charts, right? Super connectors are extremely rare. They're like a 1% thing. But in the pro-Biden, the sort of pro-Trump and the impeachment collusion one, I mean, a massive amount of these were likely bots in a botnet. And then you can see on the troll one, our machine learning algorithm identified um, a lot of accounts. And by the way, if they were distributed evenly, they'd be at about 2.5% across all the communities. But they cluster really in this um, pro-Trump one, this impeachment, you know, Russian collusion, sort of anti-Trump one, and this libertarian community. So uh, what I want you to see here is not only is there something very suspicious that looks a lot like an interference effort and it matches the signature of Russians and their playbook, um, this idea of trying to take data and, and bin it in meaningful ways to try and make uh, discrepancies or weird things more visible is pretty powerful. We could have never done this on the whole data set. You had to do it on these sort of meaningful, self-organized, meaningful sub, uh, subsets. And then some of the tactics, uh, which again, line up with Russia's playbook. Um, so um, all of the, uh, both sides, both left-wing and right-wing trolls were talking about Jeffrey Epstein, but always like, it's gonna make the other team look bad. Black Lives Matter, like, hey, you know, we love Black Lives Matter, it's really important, get involved, or oh my gosh, they're the thugs, they're Antifa, they're gonna get us. Coronavirus stuff, they are using coronavirus to shut down elections or they are using coronavirus to go ahead and um, stuff the ballot box um, through fraudulent voting. And then on the sort of parallel ones, uh, on the left-leaning ones, there were just absolutely vile, ugly, um, photoshopped, sexualized pictures of, the, of, of Trump women um, mocking um, them or like really like sexualizing them and, and really uh, misogynistic kind of things. And then very anti-stuff about uh, uh, former President Trump. And then on the right-wing stuff, the same thing really vile racist uh, and sexualized um, content and images around um, uh, former first lady and about Joe Biden. So a lot of parallelism, which again supports the idea this is a common actor working, right? They have like almost identical playbook and tactics. They're just sort of like left and right skewed. Um, this is an example of how um, these trolls, in addition to all this hyperpartisan content, how they sort of boosted hashtags in, in um, uh, coordination in a way that's very suspicious. It's, it's, very, it's a non-human way of doing things. On the left-hand side here, here is a, uh, a, a tweet, Caucus for Bernie. And you can see that most of the people that tweeted Caucus for Bernie had 10 or more hashtags used, which is normal. When you use hashtags, you use a lot of them. Look on the right-hand side, this Bernie one, one which came out before the ca the caucus had actually you know ended before the election had ended and there had been like a uh, the primary had ended there had been like a, a caucus decision um, immediately this one Bernie one came out clustered in the Bernie Sanders uh, community and most of them used one or less than ten hashtags really unusual behavior so coordinated unusual hashtag behavior from these uh, accounts that our troll algorithm said are indeed trolls. So another, another sort of um, intersecting uh, way of finding that there's a, a problem or kind of a triangulation.